Good morning. Very delightful morning to all the students. Hope you are staying safe at home. Today, I, Ms. Anubha Sattar, is will is going welcome you all to the online session of Saint Lawrence Class Eight Biology. Today, I am going to start up with the topic transportation of food and minerals in plants. So, as you all know, children, that we have already discussed about the nutrients, the mode of different, the modes of nutrients, both in plants and animal, in the previous session. Today, I'll make you study the transportation of minerals and food in plants. As students. You all know that like all the animals, plants too need nutrients. Plants too need food, water, and mineral for their growth and development. And for this, you they need a transportation system to transport the to tra uh, to uh, take the synthesized food material from the. Uh, synthesizing part of the plant to the different non-synthesizing part of the plant. So today we will read about specifically about the transportation of food and minerals in plants. Before coming up to the transportation of how it takes place, let us see what helps in transportation of food and minerals in plants. All the plant, as I told you, that they need a transporting system to transport the synthesizing food material from the plant to the non-synthesizing part of the plant. Therefore, all the flowering plant has a unique and specialized system to transfer the food, water, and mineral. And these specialized cells or bundles of cell are called as connect conducting tissue. or they are also called as vascular tissue because they are in the form of series of bundles they are in the form of different cells having performing different function but ultimately resulting to one unique function of transportation that is why they are also called as vascular bundles if we talk about the vascular bundles the vascular bundles are of two type these are xylem and phloem the xylem xylem are the tubular long thick walled cells which are generally or often made up of dead cells they generally comprise of tracheids xylem vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber and the main function of xylem is to transport water from the roots of the plant to different non synthesizing parts of the plant to different parts of the plant not only water it also help in transportation of dissolved solutes and different dissolved compounds to the various part of the plant whether it be the root whether it be the stem and to any part of the plant Now coming on to the second very important vascular tissue which help in transportation that is phloem the phloem appears to be tubular in structure back to back in the long tube like process and then it is made up of living cell it comprises of companion cell sieve cell phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers and the main function of phloem is to transport food produced from photosynthesis from leaves to all the non synthesizing parts of the plant like roots stem flowers petioles buds to all the non synthesizing parts of the plant now the very important things we are heading for that how this process of transportation takes place what what are the methods involved in the process of transportation so the very common word used for transportation of food material in water and food material in plant is called as translocation it is the process of movement of food from the synthesizing 
to the non synthesizing part of the plant and this process is not just a uniquely simple step it involves a complex of processes complex of methods complex of physical phenomena and three important methods of translocation are absorption of water and mineral from the roots then second is ascent of sap and then translocation of food material to the various part of the plant now heading on to how the transportation of water and different solutes takes place in the plant so there are various process of absorption of water from the plant and then transporting that water trans for uh, transferring this water from the roots of the plants to various part of the plant as well as to the synthesizing part of the plant where it actually required so the absorption of water takes place by three simple steps and these are osmosis diffusion and active transport so let us come on to the diffusion first diffusion is a very simple process in which the water molecules or the sol generally the solute particles moves from higher concentration to lower concentration and this is one of the very simple step which does not involve any energy it's just a simple process just like when you dissolve sugar in the milk then sugar almost occupy all the places of the milk and evenly distribute in the whole milk similarly diffusion also in diffusion the movement of dissolved solutes or gases from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration takes place it's a simple phenomena then the second very important phenomena it's a biological and as well as physical phenomena which generally takes place in all the plants and animal and it is an important phenomena by which the cells derives the solvent molecule the solute molecules okay so osmosis osmosis is a movement of generally it's a movement of solvent diffusion is a movement of solute but osmosis is generally associated with the movement of solvent that is in if we talk about then it is water almost okay water and all the dissolved ions and solutes which are dissolved in the water in the form of fats that so osmosis is the movement of water from higher concentration to lower concentration but because it is a phenom biological phenomena but it involves a partially permeable membrane or it is also called as semi permeable membrane which is only found in biological specimens of plant and animal just like cell wall just like in case of plant these, these may be root hairs okay so in this way osmosis is also and it also does not require energy it takes place just due to differentiation or difference of uh, osmosis it takes place due to osmosis gradient different in concentration then comes the third very important phenomena that is active transport this type of transportation generally involve the transportation of salts and ions and since because here the movement takes place from lower concentration to higher concentration just to opposite of diffusion and osmosis that is why to transport these solutes and particular ion to from one cell to another cell they require a protein they require a carrier protein to carry them from one cell to another cell and that is why because it is against the process of osmosis and diffusion and here the movement takes place from lower concentration to higher concentration that is why it requires energy and this energy can be in the form of atp so it utilizes the energy in the form of atp for the uh transportation of various solutes salts or ion so you have seen how these three process osmosis diffusion and active transport helps in absorption uh, of water 
and minerals and dissolved solutes from the roots and hence transporting it to various part of the plant now heading on to next very important process phenomena that takes place in plant that is ascent of sap what is ascent of sap once the water is absorbed there are various phenomena which work which help to take the water from roots to the various parts of the plant this may be root pressure this may be difference in the concentration of soil and the cell sap there are various methods involved so now the question arises what is ascent of sap so it is the rising of water from roots to different parts of the plants or we can say it is the upward movement of water from the roots to all the aerial parts of the plant body is called ascent of sap and it is also called as translocation of water and the basic cause of the ascent of sap is the root pressure or you can say it is the change in the or in the difference in the concentration of the masses or the solute or the solvent when we are talking in terms of concentration then this was a very important phenomena that helps in transportation of water from the root tips to all the parts of the plant to the synthesizing parts of the plant that is the leaf where it is used for transport where it is used for photosynthesis it is used for cooling it is used for transpiration so this was all about the transportation how the transportation takes place how the transportation of water takes place minerals takes place in plant now we are heading on to the next heading that is the nutrients which are very essential for the growth development and to complete the life cycle of a plant a healthy life cycle of a plant so there are various nutrient al uh, elements involved in this okay so we can classify these nutrients broadly on the basis of their function we can classify it into two headings that is macronutrients and micronutrients the nutrients which are required by plant in large quantities they are called as macronutrients and the nutrients which are required by plant in a very small or a very meager amount but still they are important for the plant because their deficiency will somehow affect the growth and development of the plant are called as micro nutrient let us study about some of the important nutrients which are essential for the plant the first very important ingredient for plant is the nitrogen and its deficiency can cause chlorosis that is the destruction of chlorophyll and it can even cause yellowing of the leaf then the second very important mineral is the phosphorus and it results its deficiency results into the poor growth and premature leaf fall of the plant then third is the potassium it is also very important mineral which uh, which uh, exhibits in the growth of the plant because its deficiency can cause dwarfing or shortening of the plant then iron it required in a very meager quantity it is a micronutrient but still very important and its deficiency can cause yellowing of leaf and you see yellowing of leaf can lead to destruction of chlorophyll and in turn will affect the photosynthesis which will result in the poor development and even the death of the plant then calcium it is also very important for the development it is a deficiency can cause dwarfism and the leaves also it can also cause the curling of the leaf which result into the decrease of the photosynthesis the surface area will decrease which results into the decrease of photosynthesis then sixth one that is the sulfur it is also very important nutrient and it also deficiency also lead to chlorosis and the yellowing of leaf so you have seen children that these nutrients are too important for the plants for their growth and development and this was all about today's session thank you and have a very nice day